So let's take a look at the code and make that change. Yeah, so we'll make two changes. We'll make changes to uh, the workflow here right in the repository first, and then we'll make work changes to the actions repository. Let's open up the actions repository here. This is the ELCO actions, and we will make our change in the workflow initialize function. Uh, which basically is a, the, the action YAML is a description of this function. What um, what parameters does it have? And in the PS1 file here is the actual code that runs when you are doing the initialize. As you can see, it calculates um, a telemetry scope and uh, sets a correlation ID so that we can have um, so we can have telemetry of ELGO for GitHub. Let's just insert um, here a change. And just in order to be able to see what I'm, I'm changing, I will just paste it in here. And let's commit these changes directly. And as soon as I run my, my workflow again, this will actually uh, be part of the output. Um, I'll make one more change to the workflow initialize here. Let's see where we have that. We'll go to the CICD and you have the initialization here. So this one calls the initialize workflow. And let's just insert a task in this job uh, and we'll call that my task and create. Oh, we need to edit and let's find the initialize here again. After running the initialization, we will run my task. We'll do a an inline uh, PowerShell function here, which will just do some write hosts. Um, yeah instead of actually calling into something. So with that change, let's commit this directly and go to Actions CICD and run this workflow. Now, the reason why we put it very early is, of course, that we'll be able to see very quickly what actually happens. So right here in the initialization, job, we should be able to see, um, yes, so I can click this one. It's waiting for a vacant Windows latest runner. As we can see, both the my change from our action and the task my task directly here from um, from the workflow was printed out, and uh, the process continues to now do the rest of the CI/CD workflow. One thing we we'll notice is that the check for updates will tell us that there are updates to ALGO system files. And the reason for that is, of course, that we change the ALGO system files locally, and there now is a difference. So the way that the check for updates and the update works is not by, 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 by magic trying to figure out what changed where and stuff like that. Uh, it will simply take what are the template um, YAML files uh, and and compare them with what is the what is the current YAML files and we'll see here that there are updates for your ALGO system files. Um, so so it calculates how how the template YAML files will look if I 
if I move them over into this repository and then it compares them to the YAML files that are in this repository currently. Um, and the thing we need to do in order to, to, to make sure that we have the modifications that we created inside our own YAML files here, uh, we need to move those to the ALGO PTE repository YAML file. And then when we've done that, we'll be able to um, to run this one without getting this notification. And then we know they they are they are all right. You could also create the, make the changes directly in ALGO PTE, uh, but then you'd have to do the update ALGO system files every time you have made a change. So depending on where you, how many changes you're doing, uh, that might be a bad idea. But let's just go and have a look at our CICD YAML file here and take the the task that we had here. I'll take a few more lines to make sure that we have it right. And then go to GitHub and move to our and go PCE. GitHub workflows CI CD and let's edit this one find the location where we had the change I think it was right here and paste the lines in um, which I need an empty line there and yes we have the same indentations as here that's fine Yep, this looks correct. Let's commit these changes. And if we go back here now and go actions, update ALGO system files, and not change the URL this time, it should tell us in a moment that I am running on the latest um, on the latest version of the ALGO PTE template. And as we can see, it tells us that our repository is running on the latest version of ALGO. We could, of course, have used VS Code for modifying the YAML files. It's actually much easier, but in order to save time going through this process, I used uh, just the edit function in GitHub. Um, but on a normal day basis, you would use probably use VS Code to modify the, the repositories and make sure that you have everything in place there. With that, let's continue with the next task.